everybody, George Taylor here at OnTracked Audio. Sorry about the Darth Vader look. But uh, my cameraman, my camera person, has informed me that my head is too bright for this video. So, we carry on. I've got a hood on. I could put on a baseball cap, but I won't bother to do that. So, today, I would like to talk about power amps. Uh, and sorry, I'm queuing up my notes here because I want to make sure I say the right things. Because power amps, on, on the face of it, are pretty boring. You put a signal into it, <laughs> the signal comes out of it much louder so it can drive speakers. There are literally no features on a power amplifier, ostensibly. And really, what is there to talk about a power amplifier? Because they all sound the same, right? You know, they've got transformers, and they've got output circuits, and they've got transistors, and they've got, you know, they've got capacitors, so they all sound the same. Yes? Agreed? I don't. I do not agree. Power amplifiers do not all sound the same, which is why I love carrying Angela Gilbert stuff, because it sounds different. Frankly, I think better than most things. Or all things. But what's different about them? What, why would they be better than other power supplies? Well, or sorry, why would they be better than other power amplifiers? Well, first of all, I already tipped it, the power supply. The power supply is a huge deal in this thing. The power supplies in these components are bigger and badder than pretty much anything else you'll find. And that's a big deal. Um, going to sidetrack a little bit here. I get called in every. I'm a, I'm I'm a retired music teacher as well as a musician. I get to hear live music all the time, which is what the thing that's really cool about that for me is. I know firsthand what live music needs to sound like because I instructed it for years and years and years, and I've played it for years and years and years and years. Does that make me an expert? Makes me more of an expert than most people when it comes to what live music is supposed to sound like. Okay, however. I'm not going to go off on that tangent today. The tangent I'm going off on today is even though I've stopped teaching and instructing every day, Uncle Jorge here still gets called in to do clinics for other people, particularly with, with young musicians who need to learn how to do some, some basic things to make their tone better. Bear with me because this does have a bit of a bearing on what I'm about to say. The thing that young musicians do all the time. The thing that makes one group of young musicians sound better than another group of young musicians is the use of air and the control of air. How do you use air? Simple. You sit with good posture, you make sure your body is relaxed and loose, all the muscles are able to expand, and then you literally make a habit out of breathing in as much air as you can all the time. Okay, that's item number one. And that's the most important thing because it controls item number two. When you play a wind instrument, you have a thing called an embouchure, which is basically the way your mouth and your jaw and the muscles in your face are set on a mouthpiece so you can go into it and make a sound. Or into it and make a sound, depending on whether you're playing a woodwind instrument or a brass instrument. I got tons, literally tons of awards, hundreds of awards over the years of teaching and it's always the same. People would say, well, why do your groups sound good? My groups sound good because I make them breathe and they make, I make them articulate. I make them tongue properly. I make them use their mouths properly. So this is the control mechanism. This is the power storage mechanism. And people for years and years and years refused to believe it. The people I knew very closely saw it happen on a daily basis and they understood. Most people like, yeah, just breathing in on a ticket. No, no, no. There's something else you're doing. No, literally. It's air. It's air supply and air control. Why is that important? Because that works to me exactly the same way in a power amplifier than it does with a, mu with a musical instrument. Okay. And the simple fact of the matter is you have a power supply, you have a control mechanism, and your job is to get air to the control mechanism into the component as consistently and as quickly as possible and you replenish that air consistently 
as often as possible. Same thing here. What we're trying to do with power supplies is we are trying to build a bank of energy that we can A, deliver instantly when it needs to be, and B, it can recharge as quickly as possible so when the next really demanding segment comes along, we've got lots of energy to, to discharge into components. And this works for input devices, output devices, digital audio conversion devices, all the, all the devices in the world. But the, big, the, the important thing about a power amplifier is a power amplifier has to create a sonic waveform, just like a trumpet has to create a sonic waveform. You do that on the attack, okay? If you don't tongue with energy immediately, what happens is you don't create an accurate waveform and whoever is listening to you doesn't know when the note is supposed to start, what exactly it's supposed to sound like, how loud it's supposed to be, what pitch it's supposed to be, the rhythm gets blurred. The same thing happens to a much greater, to, sorry, to a much lesser extent in electronic stuff, but it happens and it's important because if you pay enough attention to it, what you find out is your ability to move energy around in a component is paramount to how good it's going to sound. It's a really, really, really big deal. And that's the feature that nobody can talk about because it's inside and it's, it's most people don't even understand what I'm talking about right now. So if you don't, please, please, please contact me and I'll tell you how I think this works. Okay. Is it written in science? No. Is it bogus? I don't think it is. I honestly don't think it is. It manifests itself the same way in a power amplifier than it manifests itself in a musical instrument. So big, big power supply, item number one. You have got to have lots of energy and you've got to be able to deliver it. Okay? I'll talk more about that at point number four. Number two, solder joints, solder joints, solder joints. I'm sorry, the bigger the solder joint, the better the energy transfer. So all these little thin wires and thin solder joints and circuit boards that most people are using on their stuff, I mean, it's, it's neat, it's tidy, it's easily redoable by labor that does, frankly doesn't get paid top dollar. But it's not the best way to get maximum energy transfer. The best way to get maximum energy transfer is to use copper bus wires, and big solder joints for maximum transfer, okay? And speaking of energy transfer, it's always about the amount and speed. How much energy have you got inside your power supply stored up, and how quickly can you get it you know, in, you know, in terms of uh, what, what, what's, the, what's the time it takes to get it from where it is to where it's supposed to go? Okay, so the amount of energy you can get quickly to a component is of paramount importance because, let's face it, music's a real-time thing. If you, hit a if you hit a big dynamic and a peak in music and the energy didn't get there in time, well, the impact is lost. It's gone. The, the moment's already lost. doesn't matter how much energy is there two milliseconds after the peak. It makes no difference because the peak is gone. You're on to you're on to the quiet part now. Or you're on to, you know you're on to the pizzicato strings after the massive orchestra hit. So it doesn't matter anymore. The last thing that is of paramount importance inside, and by the way, this is an Angela Gilbert Young A210 power amplifier, Class AB, 130 watts per channel. Um, those are those are I guess interesting things to note, but not of paramount importance. The paramount importance thing is, again, the energy inside that gets delivered. Finally, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a hint about a little bit of the secret sauce in here. It's the way that, like any, any clown can take a whack of capacitors and throw it inside a box and go, yeah, I've got a ferret in there. But the ferret doesn't matter unless the capacitors are grouped and you need to have capacitors of different sizes and different types because some of the capacitors job is to discharge energy and some of the capacitors job is to restore energy and hold energy. Okay, so you've got at least two, usually three different types of capacitors inside here and they all have jobs in terms of whether they throw energy out or they store energy, or they charge energy. There's really kind of three steps involved in the whole process. And you know what? 
I'm not going to talk about what kind of capacitors you use because that's proprietary. That's that's a little bit of a secret. I'll tell you they're in there. I won't tell you what they are because, frankly, <laughs> it's not my job to tell people how to build amplifiers. Okay? So that's why these amplifiers are so good. That's why not all amplifiers have these attributes. And that's why some amplifiers, frankly, sound better than other amplifiers. That's the way it is. Um, and I realize, again, this is just one guy's opinion, but come and hear the difference because there is a difference and you will hear it. I guarantee everybody that comes in here says the same thing. Oh, I don't know about power. Oh, that sounds different. Yes, it does. And, that, and I've just told you why. Energy transfer. That's the secret. So now you all know. Um, but if you've got questions, as always, my email address is ontractaudio at rogers.com, E-N-T-R-A-C-T-E-A-U-D-I-O at R-O-G-E-R-S dot com. That's my email address, my website, ontractaudio.com, E-N-T-R-A-C-T-E-A-U-D-I-O dot com. And if you want to Get other information from, from another place. Well, the best place to check would be, actually the best place to check where you should check first would be Angela-Gilbert.com. A-N-G-E-L-A-G-I-L-B-E-R-T.com. So Darth Vader Taylor, peacing out here. Um, thank you for joining. Have a great day. Hope to see you. Talk to you soon.